as a government. We stand up for jobs. We look for ways to keep jobs, to create jobs in this country, and that's a responsibility we take seriously. I want to do all we can do to protect this headquarter and protect the thousand of good, well-paid jobs we have at SNC-Lavalin. The SNC-Lavalin controversy continues to ripple through the halls of power here in Ottawa, but the criminal case against the company is also being watched closely in towns and cities across this country. That's because SNC-Lavalin has a presence in many Canadian communities, providing nearly 9,000 jobs. What effect could criminal prosecution have on those jobs? Mike Bradley is the mayor of Sarnia, and he joins us by Skype from City Hall there. Hi, Mayor Bradley. Great to see you again. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Ashley. Mayor, how important is SNC-Lavalin to your city? It is very important. There are over 300 employees that work for them in this community because of our industrial sector. Their engineering companies are needed on a daily basis, and they plan not just the day-to-day -day activities in the community to keep the industry working here, the chemical industry, but also the long-term industry. And right now, for example, we have a $2 billion plant being built by Nova. And the engineering companies like Lavalin are very much a part of that and very important to our economy. If that company was kept from bidding on projects like that or, or federal projects, what kind of an impact or do you think there would be an impact in Sarnia? Well, I think there are two parts to that question in the sense that even though the projects I refer to are private sector projects, uh, if they're stopped from bidding on government projects, given the amount of work they do across this country, then they won't survive. And we won't have them available to be part of what is a worldwide industry. We in Sarnia have a number of engineering companies located here that can do business around the world. And Lavalin's a really good example of that. I don't want to get into all the politics and what's going on in Ottawa in the sense of are they right or wrong and what they have done. I do know they're very much an important part of the Canadian economy. And I think that's being lost in this uh, political debate about their value. And let's think about what happened. Whatever the scandal is, it isn't because of the people that work day to day, the 300 people that work for Lavalin and Sarnia or across this country, the thousands that do. They are just collateral damage if this company is forced down because of the federal rules. I take your point. And so let's let's for a second remove the politics around the controversy here. Is there, from your perspective, is it is it justified for a company like SNC to avoid criminal charges if it means saving those jobs? Do you think that should be a consideration when you're talking about criminal charges? I think it should be a consideration. But there's a reason why the federal government passed the law that gave them the right to look for this exemption. I'm not a lawyer. The lawyers can debate that, and probably the courts will. But the fact is that... It seems to me, because of this case in Libya, thousands of Canadians could lose their employment because of no actions of their own. Those people should be held responsible. And I think there needs to be an examination of this 10-year rule and the damage it could do to not just this company and others. They should be held accountable, but at the same time, there should be some, some just common sense to it. And that's what disturbed me about this entire debate. It seems to me that the tribal politics and the gotcha politics in Ottawa has forgotten the people out there that work for SNC Lavalin. And it's ironic, as I talk to you right now, I'm looking right across the street and their names are in big lights right across the build on the building across the street on Front Street in Sarnia. That needs to be remembered. There's other parts of this debate than what's happening in Ottawa on the political side. Do you think there's a way out, given all the politics right now? Are you concerned that uh, that those those jobs, I guess, will continue not to be, I mean, and, and are somewhat understandably so, given everything that's going on, but do you think they'll sort of be, be in the shadow as this debate plays out? And what are the potential consequences of that? Bashi, I think that's already happened. I think that component has been forgotten because of what's going on. I mean, we're about six, eight months away from an election. I understand that. I understand the partisan politics is occurring. I also, I'm seeing a lot of rumor, innuendo, and speculation about all the intrigue that's gone on on this particular issue. That will sort itself out. But I don't think we should forget about those people out there that day-to-day -day work for this company that are giving their best, and because of no fault of their own, perhaps the corporate structure, but not because of themselves, could lose their jobs, and Canada would lose a company that has done a lot from coast to coast for us. Do you plan on raising uh, this with any level of government? I will be raising it with our local MP, who's a conservative, and I will raise it with whoever needs to know this message. Now, let's keep some balance to this. There's been too much of a rush to judgment in a very short period of time, in my view, 
that hasn't served the public interest. And I do not like this, uh, what I consider almost uh, the, the approach of let's not worry about the people impacted. Let's only worry about the politics of helping ourselves get elected or get reelected, which I think is drowning out the people part of this and the people that work for this company. What do you mean a rush to judgment? I think we've seen it. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation about the company and its activities. There's been speculation about uh, the relationship between the cabinet minister and the, and the prosecution. None of it has been really detailed in a manner that is fair to everyone involved. That needs to happen. And we're seeing a lot of that anymore on any issue, that jud judgments were being made in the social media world that really do not deal with the facts of the case. And also, the reality is we need to be fair as Canadians. We've always been fair people, that we work together and we work our way through issues. And we do it in a fair manner, where everyone gets the right to give their side of the story. And then you make a final judgment and people are held accountable. Do you think there needs to be sort of some kind of neutral airing of the facts, some sort of process by which, because you're not the first person to say uh, on our show, for example, that, that uh, you know, the facts do need to be ascertained, but right now there doesn't seem to be a mechanism in place to accomplish that. Do you think there needs to be some sort of process established to do that so that those people whose jobs depend on this are, are part of the, th the thinking, I guess? Oh, definitely. You've nailed it in your question. The fact is that uh, the partisan politics isn't serving anyone's purpose, and it's not even serving the partisans, because no one's coming out of this looking good. What we need is an independent way to deal with this, like they do in the U.S. The facts can be put on the table. It's a fair process, and at the end, people can draw their conclusions. I'm not at that stage yet to make that judgment. I just do know that SNC-Lavalin employs a lot of people in this community of 300 uh, people and also across this country, and they need to be treated fairly. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Mayor Bradley. Thank you. It's been just over a week since the Globe and Mail first reported on the SNC-Lavalin controversy. Over the past eight days, the Prime Minister has been asked a lot of questions about what he may have said to his former Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould. Here's a recap of how those answers have evolved. The allegations in the Globe story this morning are false. Uh, neither the current nor the previous Attorney General uh, was ever directed by me or by anyone in my office uh, to uh, take a, a decision. Uh, in this matter. I have uh, met with Minister Wilson-Raybould uh, a couple of times uh, already since uh, arriving in BC yesterday. She confirmed for me a conversation we had this fall where I told her directly that any decisions on matters uh, involving the Director of Public Prosecutions uh, were hers alone. I respect her view that uh, due to privilege, she cannot uh, comment or add uh, on matters uh, recently before the media. Uh, and I also highlight that we're bound by cabinet confidentiality. Uh, in our system of government, of course, uh, her presence in cabinet uh, should actually speak for itself. I am uh, surprised and disappointed and, to be honest, don't entirely understand why uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould made the decision she did. Because if anyone, particularly the Attorney General, felt that we were not doing our job fully responsibly and according to all the rules as a government, it was her responsibility to come forward to me this past fall and highlight that directly to me. She did not. Nobody did. Uh, and there were many discussions going on, which is why uh, uh, Jody uh, uh, Wilson-Raybould asked me uh, if, uh, if I was directing her or going to direct her to take a particular decision, and I, of course, said no, uh, that it was her decision to make, and I expected her to make it. Uh, I, I had full confidence uh, in uh, her role as Attorney General to make the decision. If Scott Bryson had not stepped down from Cabinet, Jody Wilson-Raybould would still be Minister of Justice and Attorney General.